Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about ellipsis, which is, you know, three dots. And uh, I'll first introduce how it plays a part in Python, and then we're going to talk about its uses in typing, uh, in particular PEP 484 type annotations and MyPy. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into that. Okay, so let's, let's show ellipsis first. <laughs> Uh, we're going to do this first in Python 3, but then I'm going to show you that it actually exists in Python 2, but it's a little bit uh, harder to use, I guess. Uh, so there's this built-in singleton in Python called ellipsis, and its representation is just ellipsis. So if you type, you know, ellipsis, you get ellipsis. And you can, uh, you know, use this as a variable or whatever, ellipsis, or as a value for a variable, and, you know, it's essentially a placeholder value that you can use, similar to none, true, and false as well. You know, true, none, and false. Uh, although none, <laughs> none's ripper is the empty string, so you don't actually see anything. Uh, and there's another way you can access ellipsis in Python 3, and that is just three dots. And this is syntax that was added in Python 3, or I guess it was made more generic in Python 3. You could use it before in Python 2, but only in very specific cases. Let me show those. Uh, so if I just type three dots in Python 2, we, of course, get a syntax error. Uh, you can, however, get a reference to this uh, through getItem, which is the one place where um, where ellipsis is allowed to exist. So if we do self.x equals obj, and we make a... Oh, we need to, <laughs> we need to make this a new style class. Man, <laughs> Python 2, right? <laughs> I always forget how to do this the proper way. Um, C equals C, and if we access C with an ellipsis, we can get a reference to it that way. It also exists as the global ellipsis name as well, but you could use it in slices, and uh, this was used in several libraries. I believe NumPy has a use for this, um, but there aren't there aren't any built-in types that utilize this directly. But anyway, that it does exist in Python 2, um, but we're going to be talking about Python 3 semantics today, so we can basically ignore that. Uh, but it was added in Python 3 as a generic bit of syntax. It could be used in any expression or statement context, uh, which makes it a lot easier to, you know, have sort of placeholder functions where, you know, I don't actually implement this function. Uh, it works essentially the same as pass here. It's just a, a statement that is uh, an expression. Similar to how you could just have, you know, five <laughs> as your as your statement here. This doesn't actually do anything. It's just a statement or expression statement. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the intro to ellipsis. So now let's talk about its uses in typing. And for this, I'm going to open up a Python file. And the first typing use of ellipsis is in tuples. Uh, and so let's let's talk about that first. So from typing import tuple. And tuple has two forms when you are type annotating stuff. Uh, I'm also going to import lists, because we're going to use that one as well. Uh, from typing impost, <laughs> I can type, right? Uh, so there are two uses of tuple. Uh, one is for kind of couplings of different uh, variable types. And this is kind of what gets used in like multiple return values or in like swapping or in like composite keys or stuff like that. So if we had something like, you know, F, and we'll put the return value in there later. But let's say that for whatever reason, it returns a number and some string and, you know, some float. And so the way you would annotate this multiple return value, this is actually returning a tuple, uh, is by tuple with int stir float. And this is kind of the variable args form, form of, or I guess not variable args, but like positional types of tuple, uh, where the the inner value in the generic part of tuple is the positional types. And so that's one way that you can type tuple in MyPy. The other way that you type tuple is a variable, uh, a variable length, but a homogeneous tuple. Homogeneous here meaning that every element in the tuple has exactly the same type. And so let's say we had another function, you know, we had maybe we retrieve some list from something. So we have like x, which is a list of integers and has a bunch of integers. Now, of course, this type annotation isn't necessary in this context because MyPy can infer that this is in fact a list of integers. I'm just doing this to demonstrate, um, you know, make it more apparent to the viewer what's going on there. 
Uh, but let's say we converted that list in some way. Maybe this was a function that returned a list of integers. But, um, and we're going to convert this into an immutable sequence via tuple, um, which is just going to contain integers as well. And the way you type annotate this is with a, um, a similar expression to this above, uh, but we're going to be using ellipsis here. And this says that this is a tuple of integers that uh, is variable in length. So this could be one integer, it could be two integers, it could be zero, it could be five million integers. Uh, but it's an amorphous, you know, homogeneous uh, sequence of integers. And that's one use of, of ellipsis in, in MyPy. Let's actually install MyPy and make sure that this type checks. Virtualenv, vm 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 activate, pip install MyPy. And it should type check because it's, you know, <laughs> pretty straightforward. But just want to demonstrate that it does. MyPy t.py. And we'll see that, you know, we get success here. Now, the other form of ellipsis and typing is for placeholder values for callables. And I don't actually have any examples of this. Um, but normally when you type a callable, so, you know, you, you have some function, um, you have callable and you specify the arguments here. I've already, the arguments here and the return value here. So like, um, let's say that we wanted to assign this G up there. We would say that it takes no arguments and it returns tuple of, uh, you know, any number of ints. So this is how you would specify that callable. Typing import callable. And sometimes it's useful or like maybe, <laughs> not useful to specify the argument signature. So maybe we had like, I don't know, get function info, which takes in some function and it's a callable of any arguments and it returns any value. We don't actually care so much about what that callable is. And maybe we return a stir. Uh, and maybe we do something like, you know, return function name and I don't know. Some some value like this. I actually don't think this type checks because oh I forgot to import to any. Rim typing import any. Oh, this does type check. Okay. Which is weird because not all callables have a name attribute. Uh because get function info of a lambda. I believe yeah, that type checks, but I believe that's a runtime error. Oh. Maybe lambdas do have names. Really? <laughs> Lambda none the name. Oh, okay, well I'm wrong. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, here might be a, an example where you would you know, type annotate with the ellipsis here and the ellipsis means that any set of arguments can fit there. But anyway, hopefully this was useful. Uh, if you guys have additional questions or things that you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.